Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, the first thing I want to do is review our workflow, our Rocky and Bullwinkle workflow, and then we'll proceed to do some launches to continue to build up our ability to build spacecraft in orbit. And so, first of all, the in the previous episodes, what I did was I launched a drilling unit called Rocky that uh, would drill for ore and substrate. And then I also launched not the fuel refinery, but the mobile refinery. And the mobile refinery's gig was to, and let's just take a closer look at this. Mobile refinery is here. Okay, so it creates chemicals from minerals. It uh, creates metals from ore, and we saw that. We successfully did the um, ore to metals conversion but we didn't succeed on the biomass and substrate to polymers conversion so that's another thing it uh, does all these other uh, factors are just there so mainly it's uh, biomass and substrate to polymers and there we were missing the biomass and ore to metals and then minerals to chemicals so what we were missing was minerals because that's in another drilling unit that's this one but also we were missing biomass because biomass is created by this fuel refinery and so I need to launch the fuel refinery and the fuel refinery takes the substrate and water to make biomass it takes water to make LFO and it takes water to make liquid hydrogen and it takes water to make monopropellant that's very interesting because that basically means that we don't need carbonite in this particular thing but we do need a heck of a lot of water if you take a look at uh, the LFO is the best situation for this. Uh, 30 uh, water per second yields uh, 2 units of LFO per second. So uh, yeah, I mean it's not that bad uh, when you think about it. But uh, So we're, we're going to need water and uh, this will also have to hook up with the original Rocky to get the substrate from it if it wants to uh, do the biomass thing. So yep, uh, so we've got a cross situation here. Um, the mobile refinery uh, needs the ore and substrate as well as the minerals. The fuel refinery needs the substrate as well as the water. So both of the refinery units will have to connect up with each of the drilling units. But uh, So we're going to launch Rocky 2, which is going to be our water and mineral drilling unit. And then we're also going to launch uh, Bowinkle B Moose which will be our fuel refinery. So actually we've reversed the work, uh, workflow on these two, but that should be all right. Okay, so uh, first thing, let me introduce you to the fuel refinery unit. I guess we'll get that into orbit first because that's the tougher one. And then we will proceed with uh, Rocky uh, Rocky 2, okay? Now when I launched the, the original uh, mobile refinery, I uh, let go of the of the fairings a little bit too early resulting in the loss of vehicle and a lot of trouble so this time we will keep the fairings on for an extended period of time and uh, fortunately our payload is lighter and that is because there's a lot less resources that are uh, that this relies on it just needs um, substrate and water and it only produces the biomass as far as uh, and LFO and monopropellant, right? So monopropellant, of course, it's got tanks for because we've got these honey badger control modules on it already. And LFO, of course, it already has a tank for. And I've uh, made that tank larger, but only partially filled it. Uh, in fact, it has uh, much more delta V than the its predecessor, the mobile refinery, the, the Bullwinkle Amos. And so uh, that's good. It's got capacity to make monopropellant and uh, the layout, as you can see, I'm using one of the expected tanks, if you will, because we don't need all the resources. It's not that big a deal. So um, instead of having a whole chain of these, we only need the one for water, which is the main thing. And uh, we need substrate as well. So we've got these external canisters to hold the substrate. Actually, these radial canisters are probably better at holding stuff than these guys, the honey badger cargo pods. But uh, since you can't uh, put them in line, uh, we need them anyway. This is a cheaper uh, launch than the previous uh, one. And so we're uh, only risking 113k on it, which means that we are under 
extra pressure to bring back our launcher, which is the main cost of this. So that will be a thing. And to that end, we remember that the, this tipped over in the previous episode, or was it the episode before? Probably the episode before. Uh, so I've added Werner engines. So we've done that. I should probably add air brakes too, but let's just see how... Well, I really want to bring it back. Uh, let's see. Air brakes. Um, do I have them? I forget if I kept the B9 air brakes in. It doesn't look like it. Okay, maybe I don't have the air brakes in. Okay, so we'll just go with this for now. Anyway, it was just tipping over. That was a big problem. Um, the Delta V is a little bit deceptive because we have to lock the tanks. They always unlock when I load the craft file. I don't know why. But there we go. So it's a tighter margin than you might expect. But still, um, we've got a better chance of boosting this over to Minmus in the case of some sort of failure. And all together... Oh, and by the way, uh, with the water here, it could actually convert uh, more LFO. So it could probably make enough LFO to get into orbit, maybe. I think so. So it could probably uh, get to Mimus and then make orbit using the water it has here. But we'll see. Anyway, probably won't need to do that. Probably our second stage will handle all that and uh, do it just fine. Okay, so that is the idea. And uh, since uh, after a failure, the mobile refinery is able to get back just fine, I'm going to have some crew on. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's go to the astronaut complex to pick out our crew. Oop, don't need the Delta V stats right now. Um, we, we want intelligent people's... Ah, Mac Bill Kerman seems like a good bet. Uh, let's see. Melford. Mac Bill. And Philly. And I guess we should uh, have Genemony as well. Okay. Let's go with uh, that sort of thing. Actually, uh, Dunry has been hanging out for a while. So Dunry, uh, Macbill, and Melford. Let's send. And we'll keep it to that because, well, I just want everybody up here in the command pod on launch. Let's call it like that. Okay. So uh, just three of them, and then we'll see how that goes. Okay, obviously this is rather risky business with three Kerbals on board, but, uh, well, here we go. Up ah, the slow, majestic rise of the Maximus 5A. Carrying, a. Uh, a payload that's right up to its limit, basically. Certainly the limit of the first stage. We should have probably dumped some fuel out of the second stage looking at it. Might have been better also to dump some mod propellant. This is looking pretty heavy. I've carried some water again uh, in order to test the conversion even before we have the drilling unit. And of course, some of the water is part of the life, su life support system, so that's separate. I bet the life support system is reading some ungodly amount. Yeah, so uh, 2,000 days worth. Well, only 711 days are actually part of the life support system. The rest of the days are actually part of the, of the manufacturing process. So yeah, uh, sorry about this episode in particular being a bit delayed. Uh, it was supposed to be done on Sunday and released on Sunday. But of course on Sunday we had the Falcon 9 tragedy and that uh, uh, took me out of it for a little bit. Especially since I mostly do this stuff uh, in the morning. So so yeah, that is the main reason why this did not end up being done in time. Actually we're carrying more substrate for uh, testing than I think we should have been. I wanted less than that. The substrate is quite heavy. Well, we're doing pretty well. Looks like we've got uh, enough fuel margin here. 
we won't have to unlock the bottom tank in order to get ourselves into orbit, which was always a possibility. Of course, the bottom tank has has a uh, fair fuel reserve there. Waiting for apoapsis, and then we'll drop the fairings. Now, once we get over to Minmus, it's important to get this into the same orbit as the as the mobile refinery to make it easy for vehicles to get from one to the other. Remember, the drilling units each have to go to both this unit and the mobile refinery, so we do want them to be in similar orbits to make that as simple as possible, though not in the, at the same altitude. We need them in different altitudes, same inclination, and that will make transferring a little bit easier. Okay, we don't have to go too far up. I do want to ditch these fairings. So uh, let's call it 89 kilometers and ditch the fairings. Very good. Doesn't give us a huge boost to our delta V, but it's just marginally more efficient, so... That's good. Okay, we're coasting to Apoapsis and then we'll complete the burn there. Okay, that's that. 102 by 88 is fine. And so with that we will we will send off the payload. A successful launch this time. Quite gratifying. Let's get the payloads well the second stage is solar panels out. Uh, I hope the payload solar panels are action grouped. Does not seem like it. Okay, well let's extend those as well. I didn't really check the electric charge on this. I was assuming that it would be the same as the mobile refinery. So I hope that we've got enough solar panelry on this. Might not. Uh, electrolysis of water uh, requires quite a lot of energy. So, yep. We will see. Anyway, uh, now that it's in orbit, let's rename it. So, this will be... Bullwinkle. B moves. Okay. Bring the launch stage back down. Okay. Uh, let's unlock its extra tank. Hopefully we're not going to land in the water, but now we have Verners to help us out. So maybe you'll be alright. Okay, let's go around. Okay. Here it is, and let's just burn to let's just burn to thirty kilometers. Hundred and thirty, I mean hundred apoapsis and thirty periapsis seems like a good idea. Okay, so I've been thinking about a flyback booster, and well, not just a flyback engine stage, which is I think what EADS in Europe is uh, thinking about doing, but uh, a whole flyback booster. I mean we are pretty close to having wings on this in the first place but uh, I would have to do it from orbit because I don't trust FMRS to really be able to help us recover our boosters and so it'd have to go all the way to orbit and then fly back down from orbit uh, in which case it's quite a complicated system that has to survive deadly re-entry it also has to be stable going up with the wings and all uh, of course wings provide quite a lot of aerodynamic interesting situations so, yeah, it'll basically be a shuttle sort of thing. Okay, I forget what, uh, I think we just have some struts here that uh, burn off, right? Yeah, strut connectors. Well, can't do anything about that. We seem to be on a good trajectory. Just verifying. Yeah, seems alright. I mean, by all right, I mean get us over the mountains. Getting us over the mountains is the prime goal here. Well, that seems more dramatic. What was that? Ah, ah. Well, I guess that's the reason why I didn't put Verners in the first place, I guess. Uh, okay, well, so much for the Werner engines. Okay.
okay well this is pretty darn close I'd really like it to pass the rough patch over here as well I don't think we gotta do that you can see debris here because of course this is rough terrain as well and we don't have the burners anymore of course otherwise this is pretty stable on ground with the wide landing leg uh, width Wow, we're pretty much uh, right in line with that debris there. That's probably going to cause a problem. We've had debris lag before. I don't want debris lag again. Gear down. Getting close to render range of that debris now. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Yeah, that debris, that debris needs to be cleaned up if I want to have any frame rates at all. Oh, great. Well, this is not working. I'm going to have to quit out and uh, come back in and try this again. Well, I've been trying to clean up that debris there for quite a while, and it looks like there's quite a lot of it. Look, uh, this is the debris at that location, and it's just filling this place up. I wonder if it's multiplied or something. I can't believe how much of this stuff there is. You can see it's all landed at Kerbin. It's all this debris from the pill. Uh, anyway, I'll continue with this. Our, our first stage is still in orbit uh, after having quit out and come back in. So I've got time to clear all this up before trying to bring it back down again. And I think I'll go for a little bit over 30 this time. Let's call it 30.8 kilometers. Up, 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 up. Ooh, and there go the Werner engines. Great. I'm actually so surprised it used to be these little things that used to the the elevons that used to explode doesn't seem to be much of that now okay it looks like 30 30 point eight kilometer periapsis on a hundred kilometer apoapsis is closer but not quite there getting getting ready with the throttle here Oh, lots of uh, horizontal again. Oh, wow, a little bit of spring in its step here. It's actually still walking at a pace of one meter per second. Uh, that strut looks like it's unhappy. Uh, they're easing back off. Okay. Uh, game is auto saving. All right, looks like it's stable. Let's recover vessel. Well, that was quite a dicey touchdown, but we we made it work. Uh, we got 142,000 funds back, 96.5 percent of the total value. And, of course, we are also going to attempt to bring back our second stage. But, uh, yeah, so that is done. Let us launch the, the Rocky 2. Okay, so here's the Rocky 2. And just thinking about it, maybe I should have the second stage with the Bullwinkle uh, transfer its spare fuel into the Bullwinkle B Moose before decoupling. Uh, it only really needs the fuel in this tank. And there's no point bringing back down spare fuel. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, take that into consideration. But anyway, here is the Rocky 2. It has uh, subtle differences from the Rocky 1. Uh, first of all, of course, it has water and mineral drilling units uh, instead of the ore and substrate ones. And it, of course, has a water tank there and a mineral tank there. Mineral being heavier, of course, on the bottom. But though uh, it will probably be drilling mostly for water. Uh, its water tank uh, is the same size as the water tank on the Bowinkle B Moose. 
and uh, actually the heavier load is the minerals as you can see obviously uh, but uh, yeah even with the full load of minerals and water uh, it didn't need the larger uh, tanks that the uh, Rocky 1 had so actually these tanks are smaller than the ones on the Rocky 1 it actually carries less fuel and that'll be better off anyway okay so but we'll start these tanks empty of course and it is all set to go I have to think about uh, detection though I don't know do we have a I suppose our detection arrays can detect for water right I don't even know if there's water on Minmus we should check that out before transferring this there there will be minerals though but we're just getting into orbit for now it's not really suited to the moon it could have a let's see uh, moon let's say it carries a lot of minerals it won't be able to take a full load of minerals off of the moon oh it could it could uh, well no it doesn't have the Delta V for it though uh, it, it'd be close it'd be close Yeah, so if we had to try and drill for water on the moon instead, that's a possibility. But we'll check that out with the scanner first, before transferring it to Minmus. Okay, but let's launch. Okay, here we go for the second Maximus 5A launch of the day. And I probably should have removed the Werner engines on this. Uh, I put Werner engines on the stage. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me recover and remove those since they're gonna burn off anyway. Okay, here we go without the Werner thrusters. So throttle up, SAS on, FMRS is not necessary, and launch. Okay, tower clear and all looks steady. Okay, launch proceeding nominally. We have broken the speed of sound and on the way up through max Q now. And the rocket is looking just fine. Okay, launch proceeding very nominally. We're about to have an apoapsis outside of the atmosphere and all is looking well. We can probably flatten out here. Fuel constraints on this launch are not as tight as they were on the previous one, so definitely plenty of margin to spare this time. We'll go for 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers to simplify things, and hopefully by setting our return periapsis to let's say uh, 31.5 to 32 kilometers we'll be able to land closer to KSC okay that's 100 kilometers 0 0.37 uh, going down because of drag and let us dispense with the fairings off they go and check whether the payload so pa solar panels are action grouped excellent Okay, here we go for circularization and orbit. Okay, uh, 103 by 100. Might not be ideal for what I wanted to try, but alright. Um, yep, let's just deploy our payload and then proceed. So, throw this down and separation. Second stage solar panels out. Okay, payload is ready to go. Of course, we won't send it to Minmus until we check that we can scan for water. Okay, once again, with this sort of situation, I guess we don't have to correct it that much. Um, yep, yeah, let's try, uh, let's try 31.5 kilometers on the periapsis. 
So yeah, we're going to go around to the same point that I usually burn at, which is uh, 135 degrees east, and then we will see what our periapsis ought to be. Okay, 31.5 or thereabouts. Good enough, let's get on with it. Let's see how this works. So I guess by the end of this we're gonna have quite a fleet around Minmus. It might be wise to have a bunch of those modules on one vehicle instead of having so many different vehicles but uh, they could all dock up together in sort of a big chain of course I mean the bullwinkles the big bullwinkles could all uh, connect up together in a very long chain and we could do it like that honestly if we aren't going to do everything around Minmus maybe we should transfer some of the crews from our moon base if uh, really it turns out that our moon base, uh, maybe a skeleton crew there would be best instead of having so many people there. Right now we have some stuck in the gold bug or something like that. I mean, what do we have? We've got uh, two crew of Mooner Station doing practically nothing. I mean, we've got the skeleton crew in our main station around Kerbin. But five crew in our Kerbitat. And uh, one crew in our gold bug, yeah. Carbonite Mining Station has two. Gotta deal with the Explorer X. They, they're they well provisioned, but still. You know, got to get them going somewhere. Gotta get the new version of that too. We've unlocked a lot of new technologies, including the LVNs. So, there should be a new version of the Explorer. We've only got three crew in the Bullwinkle B Moose and four crew in the Bullwinkle A Moose. Yep, I think maybe transferring some of the crews that are in places that don't have much food over to places that do have much a lot of food, like the Bullwinkles, and it's easy to get food to them too. Uh, so they have a lot of a lot of supplies. Would be a good idea. Obviously, Mooner Station One being quite. Uh, quite a location to bring crew out of. Uh, just one one person out of Mooner Station 1 would be a good idea. Probably use, there's a rescue vehicle docked up with it, so I could use that to transfer and then we should have a rescue vehicle uh, around Minmus anyway. Okay, well uh, we're approaching the coast of the home continent. Sure seems like we're short. Oh, there go the struts I bet. Yeah, that's that's the puff of smoke that the struts make. Yep. Okay, so struts are gone, and this time we don't have to worry about the Verners exploding. But, yeah, it seems a bit short, even though we went higher. Yeah, those, those mountains are looking a lot closer this time. That doesn't make any sense at all. But I can't deny that it looks like we're gonna crash into those mountains the way we're going. So I'm going to try and slow ourselves down here. And I'm gonna try and land on this side of those mountains. But, I mean, yeah, I don't get it. We should have been pretty well clear of all that. Okay, I think that'll get us on the right track. It'll be a little bit bumpy. This might be bad. I might end up having a lot more debris to clean up at this. Uh, I don't know. Some of those, some of those slopes look quite bad. I want to land here if possible. Well, I'll deploy parachutes as soon as we are below the speed of sound, just to avoid this whole thing. Don't want to hit that part though. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of thrust to get us below the speed of sound. 
and parachutes. Oh, come on. Oh, darn. No, no, not that far. Come on. It's going to be close. So, even some rough terrain here. I'm trying to aim there. Alright, gear down. lip here. At least we seem to be straight up and down. Don't have a lot of fuel here. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, okay, not that fast. Okay. Okay, uh, a little bit of bounce, some sinking into the train, some buckling on that strut there. I think we're all right. Just barely, though. That was a close call right there. All right, recovering. Okay, well, all right, zero signs there, obviously, but uh, we got 138,000 funds back, so that's satisfactory, though I was really trying to hit the KSC this time, and so I, I just can't really predict the trajectories very well. Anyway, uh, let us check on our water scanning abilities, and then we'll proceed with transferring stuff over to Minmus. Okay, well, it looks like our planetary survey probe is doing all right, and it has the ability to scan for minerals, obviously, but uh, also water in the crust. And so we see that here, not a very great concentration at this particular location, but uh, let's see the map. It says scan set altitude is suboptimal as well, so I'll look into that. But uh, yeah, let me take a look at what the map says. So it's interesting that our our new uh, Bullwinkle Bee Moose apparently will uh, negate the need for carbonite. I, I don't know what the conversion factor is and which one is more efficient doing the water to LFO or doing the carbonite to LFO. We'll have to take a look at that. So, uh, wow, that, the purple there for the water concentration isn't a very easy color to see. The legend is also not particularly great. Oh, this there's, there's some obvious concentration. All right. So we should land it uh, somewhere around here. We need to plant, a f plant flags around these locations. Oh, okay, good. So uh, we'll, we'll just target Desert at the Greater Flats, and that'll be a good place to drill for water. Not the best place. The best place is actually further south, or uh, th there's some good locations here. But it's tolerably decent and since we already have a marker there that's good uh, we're lacking a marker for the place where we want to drill for ore substrate and also minerals uh, so anyway uh, we, we know we can drill for water there how about uh, mining for minerals uh, there seems to be a convenient lack of minerals right where the water is most abundant figures so yeah, we'll have to figure out a different location for the minerals, but we'll aim for the water first, I believe. But otherwise, uh, we could probably uh, fill up with a little bit of water, a uh, little bit of minerals there. I mean, 1% isn't nothing. It'll just take longer. Okay, I think I've got the information I wanted. Let's make the transfers to Minmus for the Bullwinkle Bemus and Rocky 2. Okay, so uh, I've got sort of an interesting approach with the Bullwinkle Bee Moose uh, to Minmus. 
Uh, we've got uh, a departure that swings by the moon. We have another burn near the moon in order to correct ourselves. And that leads us to a minimus periapsis of 787 kilometers. But if we continued on, you see we would swing back and swing by the moon again. So this is some kind of cycler orbit. I need to investigate cycler orbits. I want to use them for a Mars mission later on. But as I've been testing, you know, reusable launchers here in uh, with Kerbin and the uh, stock system, maybe I should test out cycler orbits in in stock as well. And this seems to be something similar to one. Uh, though I doubt it would encounter Minmus again on that side. Um, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Uh, of course, what you'd want is this orbit to have the same period as this orbit for the moon, and then it'd keep hitting the moon each time. It'd need minor corrections, of course, but it'd be an interesting little vehicle. Anyway, uh, the purpose of that would be to have like a habitat, and so people could uh, stick, uh, stick them, well, I mean, they could board it and then they could uh, uh, have all the supplies there and the room. And you wouldn't have to launch the sort of habitat portion of things. So you'd have a little capsule, go attach yourself to the habitat that's in a cycler orbit. And then you won't have to launch the habitat each time. That's the idea. Um, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I think that's an interesting thing to pursue, but for now, this is our approach with the Bowwinkle B Moose, so let's uh, take it out. Actually, before I do the boost, I'm going to transfer the Kerbals over to the other, uh, over to this location, and see if they can do some processing. Is that the, what I wanted? Apparently not. I thought that was that's ship manifest or crew manifest, isn't it? Oh no, what if they're all trapped in this, just like the other one? Hold on. Oh, I don't know. They might be trapped, they might not be. Uh, let's see. Mac Bill Kerbin? Okay, well he can EVA. Alright, so it is that door. And board as well. Oh, now Ship Manifest comes up. Huh. Very strange. Okay, uh, well, let's see if this works out. So I want to do a crew transfer from the pod to the fuel refinery. And... Yeah, not the pilot, just the other two. But this, this moving seems to be taking time again. This seems to be an issue. I think I'm going to have to move Melford... Oh, there's action in progress again. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to move Melford this way. Should've done it in daylight, but at least we've got ambient light. Okay. Let go. Okay, grab. And board. Alright. Okay, grab and board. Okay, let's start some activities just to make sure everything's working before we send it all the way out. The one thing that we really need was biomass. But uh, does that work out? Uh, okay, 25.3% efficiency. Biomass is that load. We've got 19 minutes till we have our node. Okay, yeah, it's very slowly building up. Too bad we don't seem capable of hiring some really intelligent Kerbals. Well, it's looking like a fine vessel, though it's overheating. Let's moderate that. We'll work on our efficiency. Okay, we're getting close to the target here. I wonder what our orbit actually looks like. Uh, it looks like a pretty close match to the intended orbit. We'll get it uh, right on it. Like so. 
Okay, so we've got that correction, but instead of just waiting around, I should get the the Rocky 2 underway. And frankly, uh, my RAM is getting a little bit dangerous. It's already crashed a few times. Uh, for those who wonder how I squeeze all the mods in, well, it's not very stable at all. So, yeah, uh, I will try and get the transfer done before the game crashes, and then I'll probably have to call it an episode. So let's hop on over to the Rocky 2. So we've got the same sort of general thing again for the Rocky 2 except it's looser on the Minmus side it actually hits the moon earlier I think than the Bullwinkle B Moose and yeah uh, I'm not trying to do this by the way this is not my intention I'm not trying to create a slingshot around uh, using the moon it's just that the moon's in the way so I just have to go with the flow and work with it because I don't want to continually waste time in orbit around this. Remember we have life support supplies to consider and every hour is an hour of lost. Uh oh, we've got all these fairings doing weird things. Okay, you guys, uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Okay, so we'll, yeah, it looks like we're pretty close to the burn point too, so we need to get started. So, engine ignition, and thrust. This one is carrying a full load of fuel, unlike the other one that's got all of its delta V. Well, there go the fairings. Uh, with any luck, uh, once we're out of physics range, they will all disappear. Gotta watch the overheating. Alright, I'll see you at the end of this burn. Okay, well that's a thing. Alright, so uh, 48 meters per second for this one, and it'll still get us to to Minmus. So, we've done that, but I think I'm going to have to call it an episode, and uh, next time we'll get all this situated and see what else we can do. Uh, I feel like I'm being a little bit repetitive here with the Rocky and Bullwinkle thing, so I think we should take a break away from Minmus. Once we get these things in order in the next episode, take a break away from Minmus. Maybe uh, start working on the asteroid and also start building up our assets that we're going to send over to Duna and uh, maybe take a look at the Explorer X and see what we have to do there. Unfortunately again it's all about timing and I've got so many things that I'm trying to do uh, in the local neighborhood near to Kerbin that I our interplanetary stuff hasn't really come up yet but maybe we need to work on uh, transferring some crews out of the places that have a shortage of food and other supplies and otherwise uh, getting some time warping done so that we can do some stuff you can see uh, Kerbin to Eve uh, is within a short amount of time. Kerbin to Jewel we could send some stuff over to Jewel in a very short amount of time we've got the funds I think and then we could transfer the the Explorer X back over here or uh, we could I mean I'm uh, transferring it back over here maybe we could subsequently transfer it over to Duna along with the rest of the fleet so yeah I want to get on with some more interplanetary stuff and uh, so after we get this part done uh, I think we'll be doing that alright so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.